Hello and welcome back to the Hasbajan YouTube channel. It is Harry here and today it is time for the return of my Nation Roulette series. I haven't done an episode in this series for a while and I apologise for that. I don't know why I haven't done an episode in this series for a while. But for this latest episode, I am covering the African island nation of Sao Tome e Principe. For those of you who haven't seen a Nation Roulette episode before, this is essentially a series where I get given a random country as per a random country generator online and then explore the country's footballing history and the current state of the sport in the country. So it helps me learn a lot about football globally as well as you the viewer. So everybody wins. If you want to check out any of the other episodes in this series, I've covered the likes of Central African Republic, Uruguay, Montenegro, Greenland, Mongolia, Fiji, Tuvalu, and plenty of others as well. There is a playlist link that you can find either in the description of this video or on the end screen of this video should you choose to watch any of the other episodes or preferably all of them if you want to, at your own pace and leisure. And if you're going to enjoy this particular episode, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Now, I'd like to think when I do these Nation Roulette episodes that I give an extensive profile of a particular nation's football history and current state and do as much research as I can without driving myself completely insane. However, I really couldn't find much about football in Sao Tome e Principe, and even in David Goldblatt's two deep dives into the history of football, the ball's round and the global game, the country is only brought up once in both of them combined, and that was just as a passing mention for when the country became a part of FIFA. As such, this video is probably going to be a lot shorter than pretty much all of my previous episodes that I have done in this series you'll no doubt be pleased to hear. Sao Tome Principe is a collection of two archipelagos located about 93 miles apart from one another, and those two archipelagos are, unsurprisingly, named Sao Tome and Principe. It is the second smallest African state by both land size and population, only ahead of the Seychelles on both counts, as it is just 1,001 kilometers squared in size, and as per the 2021 estimate, around 223,107 people live on the two islands. They are located in the Atlantic Ocean and are bordered by absolutely nobody, with the closest country to either island being Gabon, which is between 225 and 250 miles away. This might explain why, despite it being the most popular sport in the country, there is barely anything profiling football in Sao Tome e Principe, and most websites only seem to bring them up as a side note rather than as the centerpiece of an article. The islands were actually discovered relatively late by country standards, as the Portuguese came across them in around 1470 and found them completely uninhabited. They decided to alleviate this problem by populating them with slaves from other African countries as well as their own convicts, and forcing them to grow sugar. Sugar. and for a while during the following century, Sao Tome e Principe was the world's leading sugar producer. By the end of the 16th century though, that particular industry collapsed, so the islands then became a key part of the Portuguese slave trade to Brazil until slavery was abolished in 1875. It remained the Portuguese colony until exactly a century later, when the movement for the liberation of Sao Tome e Principe, which had been gathering pace throughout the 1960s, finally got its wish when a new governing body in Portugal agreed to hand control of the country over to it in 1975. Mercifully, unlike many other countries after gaining independence from a European superpower, there haven't really been any military or governmental coups, violent or otherwise, since then, although its economy has nonetheless suffered through a combination of governmental corruption, mass unemployment and poor working conditions for those who do have a profession of some kind. As mentioned, Sao Tome e Principe's most popular sport is football, as they view it as an activity which brings joy, jobs and social interaction to the locals, emphasising the notion of football well and truly being the beautiful game, and available to all. The men's national team's first official match came just a year after they gained independence, although it wouldn't exactly be one to remember, as they were thrashed 6-1 by Gabon. Just two months later, they would play the Congo and were humiliated 11-0 which to this day remains their record defeat. Perhaps unsurprisingly, given their size, population and poor economic state, their national team has never been a titan of the world game. They currently rank 187th in the FIFA World Rankings, having never cracked the top 100 at any stage in their history, with their highest position being 115th in 2012, and they've even fallen as far down as 200th, a position they stayed in for two months in 2007. In fact, as far as I can tell, they have only won by more than one goal on three separate occasions in officially recognised matches, with all of those games being two goal margins, most recently in 2019 when they beat Mauritius 3-1. 
They have received two major investments from FIFA's Goal project, with the first coming in 2001, which saw renovations to a few pitches and a new technical centre which would aid the development of youth and women's football, and the second, which was put towards expanding that new technical centre and improving their training facilities, coming in 2006. Whilst they have undoubtedly been beneficial, there is still a long way to go for the island nation before they can consider themselves ready to challenge for qualification for major tournaments. As you therefore might have gathered, they have failed to qualify for a single major tournament in their entire history ever since they became affiliated with both CAF and FIFA in 1986. In each of their five attempts to qualify for the World Cup, they have never made it past the first round, and for the 2022 edition in Qatar, they were knocked out by Guinea-Bissau 3-1 on aggregate. Despite being eligible to participate in African Cup of Nations qualifying ever since 1986, they only attempted to qualify for three tournaments up until 2013, as they either chose not to enter or to withdraw from the competition for varying reasons, although they have participated in qualifying for every competition since that date. This includes the forthcoming iteration of the tournaments to be held in the Côte d'Ivoire, and in the first round, they beat Mauritius 4-3 on aggregate to qualify for the group stages of qualification. However, CAF believed that they hadn't followed COVID-19 protocols for one of their players in the first game and subsequently hit them with an automatic 3-0 loss, meaning that they would have been eliminated. But following an appeal which was originally rejected, CAF overturned their decision and reinstated Saltame. Truth be told, it hasn't exactly gone well for them so far, as in their first two group games, they were smashed 5-1 by Guinea-Bissau and then hit for 10 without reply by Nigeria, meaning that they currently sit in last place in their group on minus 14 goal difference, with only the top two qualifying for the tournament proper. They were also managed at one stage by nomadic German manager Rudi Gutendorf, and they became one of a staggering 42 clubs or nations that Gutendorf took charge of over the course of 48 years in management. Their record goal scorer is also probably their most high profile player of all time, namely Luis Leal, who has played for the likes of Newell's Old Boys, Al Ali, Apoel Nicosia, and Baranenses in his career, although he has only been able to muster 8 goals in 21 games for the South Tomei Principe national team to date. Joint fourth on their top goal scorer list is a man named Iniesta real name Adelito Pires da Mata, who grew up idolising the Barcelona and Spain icon Andres Iniesta and was therefore dubbed Iniesta by his teammates. And clearly the nickname has stuck. They are also known to have a 19 year old called Eduardo Asuncio Varela who goes by the name of Pogba. So clearly there is a lot of influence in the Sao Tome Principe squad from other high profile European players. The man who has made more appearances for the national team than any other, with 32, is Juazifir Suarez, who sadly goes by the much less exciting nickname of Josi. When it comes to the women's game, it is uncertain as to when it exactly started in Sao Tome y Principe, but it is likely that such a scene only started to form after they gained independence from Portugal, as a patriarchal society meant that opportunities for women in sport were severely limited, if they were existent to begin with. As of 2009, four women's clubs were registered across the two islands, but the national team has only played six recognised fixtures in its entire history. The first of those came back in 2002, in which they lost 2-0 to Gabon in qualification for the 2003 World Cup, before losing the second leg 6-0 two weeks later. As far as I'm aware, they didn't play a single game between 2006 and 2021, so they weren't ranked by FIFA from 2012 onwards and still aren't on the FIFA World Rankings now. This is in spite of them playing in the first round of qualification for the 2022 Africa Cup of Nations, although they were thrashed 5-0 by Togo and subsequently withdrew from the competition prior to the second leg. Moving on to a discussion about their league, and it is actually quite an interestingly structured competition. There was a league that was set up in 1935 during their years as a Portuguese colony that ran until 1974, combining the two islands together, with Andorinha winning the most titles during that time with seven, but it was disbanded upon them gaining independence. Nowadays, each island runs their own league, with Sao Tomé having a 12-team league in which two teams are relegated every year, and Príncipe having a 6-team league in which relegation is simply not a thing. The winners in both of those leagues meet in an overall final to determine the official champions of the Sao Tomé y Príncipe combined league. Sao Tomé started theirs in 1978 and Príncipe followed suit seven years later, although the former has been cancelled on nine separate occasions, whereas the latter has failed to take place in 13 years since its inception. 
In terms of which teams are the most successful, Sporting Praia Cruz and Vitoria FC have won more regional league titles in Sao Tome than any other team with 9 and 7 respectively. The current champions are Merita 6 de Septembro, whose title win last season by 13 points ahead of Agrosport was only their second title in their history and their first since 1988. Obviously. In Principe, JD Os Operarios and FC Porto Real have both won five league championships apiece, although each of the six teams in that league have won it at least once. For the overall championship, only the league winners of both islands' leagues qualify for the grand final, and with eight triumphs to their name, Sporting Praia Cruz are the historical kings of Sao Tome Principe football. Last season though, the champions actually came from Principe, as Operarios managed to defeat Meritar 3-2 on aggregates to claim their fifth overall crown, putting them joint second alongside Vitoria. And that just about wraps up today's video looking at the footballing scene and history in Sao Tome Principe. Again, shorter video, but that was all I could find. If you want to check out any of the other episodes in the Nation Roulette series, don't forget there is a playlist link on screen about here or so or in the description. And if you enjoyed this particular video, why not drop it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, ring the notification bell to be notified whenever I upload a video straight away, and follow me on Twitter at, at Hazabajan. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you then.